Today is your opportunity to build the tomorrow you want. Good morning, one and all. I am Varsha from first year MBA. Reva Business School is established with a long-term vision to educate and empower the next generation of managers and leaders to build sustainable business which will not only enable them in achieving operational excellence but also explore new business models. With a highly trained faculty and enabled management, Reva Business School provides its students a great learning environment that fosters intellectual, social, and ethical development and thus enables them to pursue successful and fulfilling careers. Reva Business School's Young Leadership Series aims to help students by acquainting them with the young leaders of the recent times. And today, we have one such lecture, Breaking the Lobby for Showing a Path. Breaking through resistance or opposition to show a different path especially in leadership or decision making can be a challenging but important aspect of effective leadership. One must start by fostering an environment where open and honest communication is encouraged. People should feel safe to express their opinions and concerns. Breaking through resistance and showing a different path requires a combination of effective communication, persuasion and patience. Additionally, it's essential to remain open to feedback and adjustments along the way as you work towards your goal. To enlighten us more, we have with us an outstanding personality. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome today's speaker, Sri Vinay Kumar GB. We welcome you, sir. I also extend my welcome in absentia, our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. P. Shamraju, who has been a continued pillar of strength to our school. I would like to extend my welcome to the Director of School of Management Studies, Dr. Neetu. Welcome, ma'am. I also welcome the Director of School of Commerce, Dr. Subramaniam. Welcome, sir. I also welcome all the faculty members, staff, and the students of Reva Business School. Now, I would like to call upon Professor Raghavendra Prasad Shetty to introduce us about the speaker of the day. Slide, please. Good morning, everyone. Um, in fact, this is also part of the introduction. Uh, the man whom you can see here is Roman Saini. He's standing with the, um, Mr. Vinay. Uh, Roman Saini is the, he was the topper in 2013 uh, civil service examination. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, soon after he was deployed into his first position uh, as a SDM, uh, he resigns after that. Then you all know that he also co-founds an uh, academy called Unacademy. He is the co-founder of Unacademy. He had visited uh, uh, Insights on India, uh, Insights IAS, uh, Bengaluru. Well, uh, it was displayed. It was tweeted by Vinay sir himself. And I saw that. Next slide, please. And uh, when I saw that, well, I cannot uh, uh, start with the critic in my uh, formal introduction. So I thought, uh, you know, I will add this as part of his introduction. And uh, this also will tell something about uh, Sri Vinay, sir. And he had, there were rumors, in fact, about uh, uh, Insights IAS being sold out to an academy. Um, you can read out there. And then I comment that it, it happened in the month of June. Um, you are a self-made man and perhaps the first man to stand up against Delhi-based coaching establishments. I don't see that confidence in you when you are posing with Roman Saini, but he is looking like a boss. Why is that? It's your humbleness or our South Indian timidity? Well, take it on a lighter note. He did not respond to me there. He responded to me on WhatsApp. He said it's humility. So therefore, uh, what I would like to say is that there are, I know him since 2013. That is the year he started his institution. 
uh, basically, uh, you know, he came on online first, then offline class in uh, uh, Bengaluru, that is in uh, the place where his institute is there in Chandra layout, Vijayanagara. I can speak a lot of things about him since I know him. I know his journey personally because I am his student too. I was his oldest student, in fact. But he will definitely come over here and he will deny all that. So that's why I don't risk myself talking all that. So, uh, so normally this is a student platform. We don't, um, uh, you know, uh, we allow students to come over here and take the all opportunities, grab opportunities to introduce the guests and others. Uh, other things that is a part of uh, event, any event for that matter. But today uh, I felt it's my honor and it's my privilege to introduce you, you to the audience because I felt, you know, given the limitations, students, they might read about your profile, but I can feel the life to your profile because I know you, I have seen your journey and you are a self-made man. Well, here we are to begin with. Sri Vinay Kumar GB uh, did his schooling from Jawahar, uh, Jawahar Navodaya Vidyalaya, Chitradurga. After completing graduation in genetics, he decided to become an IAS officer. While working as a Panchayat Development Officer in Mysore, he had a strong urge to impart the knowledge he had gained over the years. He resigned from his job and started his off online initiative to provide the right guidance to IAS aspirants. Today, this online initiative, InsightsOnIndia.com, is India's leading website for UPSC IAS preparation, immensely popular and most sought after. Daily answer rating practice, core batch, and core batch which fetched rank one in 2016, Nandini KR. Uh, she was from Karnataka and she was All India ranking uh, one. Mentorship initiatives were pioneered by him at a time when coaching institutes had become stagnant and had nothing new to offer to its students. That was in 2013. Today, more than 5,000 students are being guided by Insights IAS under the mentorship of Vinay Kumar GB in Bengaluru, Delhi, and Hyderabad. Apart from offline students, Sir mentors and motivates lakhs of students online through his regular articles, videos, webinars, and Insta classes on our immensely popular website, Telegram, and YouTube channels. Civil services examination preparation is not a fancy process. Most of the times, luck also matters. But without no such realization, we could see many youngsters going with broken hearts when they fail to make it. If one has genuinely ever put his efforts, the experience and knowledge he or she gains over gains through, the, through this process over a period of time become an integral part of one's personality. Sri Vinay Kumar GB stands a proof for this. He is an exemplary role model that we have with us, who did not stop or stuck there itself. He wanted to probably fly, but he crawled in the beginning, started walking after a little while. Now he is running and all set to fly when he was positively approached by the grand old political party of India recently. Today, he is the forerunning candidate in the Davangere constituency for Lok Sabha election 2024. He personally trained hundreds of IAS, IPS, IFS, IRS officers. In fact, they are all his students now. Like a true guru, now he has the real opportunity to serve nation by using his own massive network of this powerful IAS lobby. Today, Sri Vinay Kumar stands in front of us as an achiever. He changed the IAS training landscape. He came from a humble background, but it is his attitude towards life and integrity towards his work and passion towards his goal, which has made him what he is today. He has miles to walk before he rests. Sir, as one of your oldest students, indeed it is my privilege and honor to introduce you to audience today. Welcome you, sir. I, Professor Raghavendra Prasad Shetty, signing off. Thank you. Thank you, sir. To felicitate our guest, our request, our dean, Dr. Shubha A., Dr. Neetu, and Dr. Subramaniam, sir.
sir. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to invite Sri Vinay Kumar G. B. Hello, Namaskara. So, hello, hey, Gidera. How are you all? I know the audience uh, consists of people from, I think, uh, outside Karnataka also. How many of you are from uh, outside Karnataka? Oh, good. Mostly from Kerala. How many of you are from Kerala? Andhra? Oh, good. Tamil Nadu? Anybody from uh, UP, Bihar? Good. <coughs> so after uh, such a grand uh, introduction, I don't know what else to tell, right? I'm not a MBA graduate, right? And uh, I never uh, thought of going to any B school. But looking at the audience, I really feel very privileged today. Maybe when uh, Roman Saini came to our institution, at that point of time I was thinking, even he didn't go to any B school, he's not an MBA graduate. After spending nine to 10 years in this civil services coaching journey, I was thinking I should do something, maybe a course in political science, maybe a course in management or something. I was in dilemma. I was thinking I should apply to Harvard, Oxford, Stanford, Kellogg's. I'm sure you have heard all these big institutions, right? And then suddenly life took a U-turn. I'll be talking about that later in the second part of this lecture. My life has been kind of a trial and error kind of life so far. Maybe a very good case study for you people just to ponder over, think over. And when we are speaking about insights IAS, it is not a unicorn or it's not a billion dollar company. It's a very small company in terms of revenue, but it's very big in terms of its impact and influence. How it all started? I was born and brought up in a small village called as Kakkaragolla in Davangere district. So Davangere is a district in the heart of Karnataka. I'm sure you have heard about Davangere, some of you. Might have savored Davangere Benne Dosa as well. DBD, I'm sure, right? When I was growing, in, growing up in Kakarwala, unfortunately, my father was unemployed. So we had to, he was always in search of jobs. So we were, myself, my brother, and my mother, we were living in a cow shed, a cow shed where there was a non-existent wall, a cow shed where the land was undulating, you know. So you had to sleep on the floor, which was undulating. And uh, to speak in Kannada, like, you know, Haldi Bhashanali, Sagni Badhira Nilantare, have you heard about it? Cow dung, you know, applied on the floor, yeah. So that was the type of uh, setup. Fortunately, on the positive side, uh, my mother was had studied till 11th standard in Sirigere. Sirigere is a very famous mutt, religious mutt, so where they give free education. My father also studied in Sirigere. So she took care of our education, and myself and my brother, brother both cracked Jawar Navaday entrance examination in fifth standard. And thereafter, for seven years, we got the highest quality education that we could imagine. CBSE education in English medium, 
totally of free cost. We never paid a single rupee for all those seven years. Anybody from Jawar Navodaya Vidyalaya here? None? Okay. Have you heard about these schools? These schools were conceptualized by Sri Rajiv Gandhi in 1983 for the rural students. So the ratio is 75% rural students and 25% urban students. And the two mostly belonging to SC, ST, OBC and uh, vulnerable sections. So I was fortunate and in that school, and anyway, like growing up in Kakkaragulla, I was always adventurous because the father was not around and uh, we had to explore all the rural, uh, you know, adventures. So we used to always be the makkalu beledo. There is a saying in Kannada. That means we grew up in streets, on streets. So the same tradition continued in Navodaya school. I was very adventurous. Bear with me because this is very important, you know, this small background story. And in the beginning, first two years, we had to struggle because we came from Kannada medium and in the beginning it was English medium. So for Kannada medium students, there was some kind of discrimination because this 25 percent student coming from urban areas mostly belong to English medium and uh, we had to compete with them and usually teachers used to be in favor of students speaking well in English, well mannered and studious. And these urban students who used to come from kind of privileged background with English medium, they were good in studies. So to bridge that gap, so there was one student in my class, his name is Srinivas, Srinivas S. Yes. And in sixth, he had displayed a skit and he has taken the part of Gabbar Singh. So, he did so well, you know, with all those Hindi fancy dialogues of Gabbar Singh, Kitne Aadmi Te Wo Wala, right? So, uh, and uh, even today we call him Gabbar only. So, his name is Gabbar and he believes he is Gabbar. Like, that is the kind of uh, internalization he has done for himself. The reason I'm mentioning, he came from Davangere city, Lutz Boy School. And uh, well read, at the age of 5-6, he had developed the reading habit. He used to go every week to library borrow some books from librarian and he used to have target of finishing two to three books in a week at the when he was studying in sixth standard so i got inspired from him so this boy is reading english books so i should also start reading english books i had the habit of reading kannada books so my father used to bring books and you know dump uh, in our village in in, in our home that so called cow shed so Kannada, I used to read, and then I took it as a challenge and started mimicking him that I should also read these English books. In the beginning, I didn't understand. But eventually, after, you know, like three, four years, when I was in ninth standard and when he was in ninth standard, it became kind of equalizer. So I started reading same amount of, same number of books that he was reading. So there was a very healthy competition. Similarly, when we were playing games, kabaddi, Right, I was very fond of Kabaddi. Always the team captains used to be same English medium students because PT teachers would love these, you know. So this is, this is a reality, unfortunately. And then these people wouldn't allow, you know, not so well-mannered children like us to play Kabaddi. And then I took it as a challenge. And then somehow I made way into Kabaddi team and then I became the captain of the Kabaddi team. And then in nowadays school, there is a tradition in 11th and 12th, you know, uh, a 11th class student becomes the school captain. So for a, around 430 to 500 students will be there in the entire campus. So I used to look up to these captains in the school and I would imagine, do I have that capability to become school captain? I used to dream about it, visualize, you know, I should also someday become school captain. But how would I do it? Because you have so-called, again, the school captains used to be the ones who used to top in the 10th standard. If they had scored highest percentage in 10th standard, they would become school captains, right? So we have this thinking, you know, so you are studious, you are brilliant and well-studied, well-mannered and you should become school captain. And I wanted to break the tradition. I was not a very studious 
student mostly extra curricular reading extra textbooks and then what happened uh, in 11th standard for some reasons our vice principal found me a fit candidate to become school captain so i had not topped but what i had done was i had distinguished myself by standing apart with my attitude in a way that i would conduct myself in a so serious manner with everyone including teachers students and excel in sports as well then they thought so there is a time you know we need somebody who can discipline the students for some reason they made you know i i have to find out the reason like why, why exactly they made me the school captain and that is when uh, you know my personality actually changed till then i used to have this inferiority complex right so maybe uh, english mathadak bartta irala i was not good in speaking english so we have this uh, excellent tradition in karnataka where schools are english medium schools but students can't communicate in english am i right right so only when we come to uh maybe like reva like uh, business schools or illi maatadtira illi english alli so only when you make a girlfriend who speaks english or you when you make a friendship with a boy who only speaks in english then you will learn english otherwise if you make a gang of only kannada students forget about you know english so you, you will never learn english once you pass out no english right so i learned english later when i started you know coaching upsc students because uh, i'll i'll come to that part so that the, the story uh, i narrated because i don't know raghav uh, i call him raghav actually so he's raghavendra shetty today only i came to know that you know he's raghavendra shetty so i used to call him raghav so when raghav mentioned that last part you know today i'm contesting for member of parliament from davangere constituency from congress party and next year maybe maybe if you are uh, if you have the reading habit of newspapers next june july you will definitely read that i will be the member of parliament from the davangere constituency you will read it so so i am making this announcement like so well before you know 7 8 months because of the confidence i have gained over so many years of my life you know with all these trials and you know errors and this will happen i am not i am not kidding it right so you can again invite me you know in next month in july so i'll i'll, I'll talk about my political journey like how it started and uh, how it is going so the reason i mentioned it is that it all started since childhood you know with a maybe ability to dream big i am saying it ability to dream big because now nowadays i see people are scared to dream big is there anyone in the audience who is dreaming really very big you know like what is your biggest dream here can anybody just tell me what is your biggest dream hmm is there anyone that you know you want to build next microsoft next google or next good byjus hmm? or good an academy as well hmm? anyone yedra pa like nim kans irta adala or is there anyone who wants to become prime minister of india hmm? no one so what is your wildest dream i mean of course let's see you people are uh, uh, yedra parwagilla huh? so i thought uh, you know this audience is going to be vibrant you know yeah, yeah. you want to be a politician very good you want to be a first successful businessman then you are from uttar pradesh right bihar yeah good very good then yes i sub inspector seriously so that's a good dream like why not ips huh why not ips so because i underestimate myself so okay okay please sit down yes from this moment onwards remove that si and you know think of ips 
so in front of you standing man who has created literally hundreds of ips officers right no i mean it i mean i'll tell you there are around 550 only ias ips officers only ias ips i'm not talking about other irs audit and account ias and ips officers who are created who have become officers from our institution and i have some kind of personal touch in every one of them right so anyone else bare dreams girls you want to become parliamentarian now 33% reservation is going to happen yaar gadre mp aagbek anta aase idya anybody no all of you had breakfast okay fine yes the number one reason that you know insights ias became successful is because i started dreaming big even when i had nothing right i tell the same thing to my students even when you have fallen down completely even when you don't have any means even when you don't have any resources even when you think there is nobody to support you when you think you are demoralized you are demotivated even in that moment you should really think big this is something that i have been consistently doing and it has really helped me so vastly in my life and it is going to help and uh, you know remember the name vinay kumar right so once i passed from navodaya school i actually got mbbs medical seat but then because of financial crisis in family i was forced to stud study bsc genetics bachelor of science genetics so during these three years i wanted to be a scientist just like somebody in in your audience you want to become businessman run a successful business and then later it will take another turn and you know you will su become something else and i wanted to be a scientist i used to keep visit indian institute of science regularly every week to attend lectures delivered by nobel laureates so they used to invite distinguished people and you know they 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 really have a very good auditorium there the reason i used to go i used to love listening such kind of lectures secondly iisc would give very tasty coffee and you know free biscuits unlimited so that was second reason and i used to interact with the scientists there what is the future of you know genetics that the course i am doing so then this i started hearing that you know the course doesn't have much future in the sense that there is something called ethical issue you might have heard about designer babies gene editing biotechnology i'm sure right some of you might have done bsc and come for mba as well so the, the thing the thing is there is so much of ethics and all the research is constrained it is limited so there is no scope for doing something really innovative in the field because the scope is limited so then i started thinking okay so i cannot do any breakthrough in this field soon so then i started thinking i should become ias officer then i started preparing for upsc examination at that time in 2006 when google had just appeared in 2004 the google came into light right then the you didn't have all facebook and all we had orkut there was a website called orkut it was a social media website apart from that there were no upsc websites there were websites which were meant for giving like general knowledge you know like basic wiz and all so i thought uh, when i started preparing simultaneously why not i share whatever i am studying with my personal blog so there was wordpress.com wordpress.com a newly started concept of blogging at that time blogging it was a new concept so i, I always wanted to try out technology so then i uh, asked my father that now i completed bsc fortunately by that time he had got a job and you know was getting salary i asked him can you buy me a computer right so he hesitated but i convinced him that computer will make me ias officer if you buy me computer i am going to use computer because all the knowledge is in computer i cannot go to delhi i cannot go to bangalore i don't want to go so you buy me a computer i'll become ias officer he got convinced and he bought me computer so it cost around you know around 18000 at that time so all the crt monitor separate keyboard separate you know modem uh, external modem not even inbuilt modem 
So it is not like your laptop, everything packed in. So at that time, the internet speed, can you guess? It, it was like 44 kbps, kbps. So in 2006, so all I could do was, you know, maybe explore mails, only text only websites. And then I opened this wordpress.com. I named it as win, W-I-N, numerical to V-I-N, win to win dot wordpress.com. W-I-N, numerical to V-I-N dot wordpress.com. So I like win to win, you know, win is there to win, something like this. So W-I-N to win. And then I started writing about whatever I was studying for UPSC examination. I started only self-preparation. I bought all the books uh, based on the syllabus. I started reading. It was trial and error. There was no proper structure to preparation. But even then, in four attempts, I cleared prelims three times. I went till interview one time. And I missed UPSC rank only by two marks. So I, I would have been some central officer, like not IAS or IPS, because to become IAS, IPS, I should have got another 35 extra marks. But by two marks, I missed my UPSC rank. But meanwhile, I wrote Panchayat Development Officer Examination, PDO Examination. So I cracked that examination in 2010. For two years, I worked as Panchayat Development Officer at Panchayat level, at Gram Panchayat. So there is a Gram Panchayat called Karpuravalli Gram Panchayat in Mysore, K.R. Nagar Taluk. At that time, my father was working there. So I thought I should go there and work. So at Panchayat level, my responsibility was to implement schemes like Mahatma Gandhi Narega Scheme, National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, Indira Awas Yojana, Total Sanitation Campaign, all the housing schemes, everything. So I got the first-hand experience of how governance works at the grassroots level by trying to implement schemes what were the challenges that i could face uh, all types of corruption you know one could witness so i started witnessing them i started fighting against corruption as well and then i was noted i was noted by ias officer who was i wanted to be an ias officer and at the bottom of the pyramid we were working and uh, above was sat an ias officer as chief executive officer of zilla panchayat right and these IAS officers who became IAS at the early age of 22, 23, they never had exposure to rural India, right? I'll, I'll just give a small case study. I mentioned the total sanitation campaign. In this scheme, the responsibility of panchayats and IAS officer was to build toilets for every home. So it was in 2010. So before it was Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. So at that time, Panchayat would give 3,000 rupees for anyone who will construct a toilet, functional toilet. So there was a pressure from above, from the union government that every village, every home in every village should have a functional toilet. So what CEO of Zilla Panchayat and their coterie of, you know, some officers who would surround them, they started, because people were not building for a specific reason. And these people started forcing them. How? by snatching their ration card, ration card or ration card, by cutting electricity to their homes, by stopping water to their homes, coercive methods. So you build toilet, at any cost you have to build toilet, stop doing the open defecation. And then in a meeting I said to IAS officer, the methods you are adopting, these are counterproductive, they won't work for a single reason. Then she asked, like, what is the reason? How are you forcing people to build toilets without giving them water? Even today, villages do not have access to water, like daily water. Once in a week, once in 10 days, they release water. And they store enough water to drink, maybe sometimes take bath, and you know, wash their utensils. And you know, a toilet consumes nearly a bucket full of water, right? when you flush it once. And the rural household didn't have this kind of you know, facility, water. Without giving them water, you're forcing them. And all the toilets that were constructed became storerooms. You know, katige. So all these, uh, uh, what do you call, mevu, katige, right? So they started storing these kind of stuff in the storerooms. 
so i started highlighting the reason i'm mentioning is that so while i was panchayat development officer i had a kind of academic interest in studying the rural india right so the, I, i wanted to give bring practical solutions long term solutions right but that foresight vision was lacking at the top leadership because they didn't have experience so i used this experience later to start my own institution so it opened my eyes that we need ias officers who are empathetic towards people who understand the grassroots level realities who understand rural india we need officers who can get things done you know not by sitting in their offices but but by visiting rural india so meanwhile i wrote ks examination i cracked ks also karnataka administrative service became a commercial tax officer but unfortunately or again fortunately that list was quashed because there was corruption allegation against kpsc in 2013 so i didn't become cto meanwhile i also applied for tata institute of social sciences tis mumbai because after my four attempts failed ks and you know i resigned from pdo in protest i thought e sakapai real world savasa so let let me become a writer let me become a documentary filmmaker something creative field so i applied for media and cultural studies and i got actually admission to tata institute of social science it was you know it was during the same time that you know ks result came so then i was about to i was in a dilemma whether to go with tis or you know go with this ks so the i thought i'll choose ks because during the same time you know in 2013 i had fell in love with a girl right so i was in love and i wanted to marry her to marry her i need to have a i needed to have a job so there i kind of a change my decision so i chose ks i left tis but then the list got squashed all the doors closed so because i had to earn something you know to prove to my uh, mother in law would be mother in law because she was hesitant she was reluctant to give her daughter to me because i was unemployed right so i told her the list might might have been squashed now but later they will again make me ks officer try to convince and all but that didn't work so then i wanted to earn myself so on our website i started certain i had started certain initiatives for upsc students to do self learning from home itself so as he mentioned earlier answer writing practices you know like daily current affairs quiz everything these were pioneered me in a way that nobody had thought about these things for upsc preparation because there was this lobby of coaching people thought that only by going to coaching one could get ranks so only by going to delhi one could get ranks so i wanted to change that i wanted to decentralize you know because again that knowledge that uh, thinking came from panchayat so because in panchayat it is decentralization that actually works so i thought i should decentralize decentralize the knowledge sharing as well so i started website and because of the uh, content i was writing uh, you know the ideas thoughts i was writing it started attracting so many people and it became very popular and i named it as insights on india because as i said earlier i wanted to become writer so i wanted to sh- share my insights on india to the world so it wanted i wanted to be a writer that's why i started it as insights on india now if you type win2win.wordpress.com it actually redirects to insightsonindia.com right so so what happened i put a poll on the website saying that now i want to start offline classes in bangalore i want to start offline guidance program for upsc aspirants because i didn't have the courage that you know i was in my village i thought who will come to me because online is working because it is anonymous nobody has seen me they have heard me as vinay and they started calling me vinay sir but when i start offline class it needs certain investment and how will i start and all but i put a poll on the website saying that so i want to start in unique initiative for upsc aspirants in bangalore are you interested 311 people said yes they want to come to bangalore it was in 2013 december that i did a poll 311 people said that they want to come to classes 
take guidance from me to Bangalore. And it was from every part of India, every corner of India. And I was shocked. Now, I am yet to begin my journey. How can I accommodate 311 people? It requires a very big classroom. Right? So then I thought, I will take only small number of 40 students. Right? And I took 40 students because I had, my father had, you know, taken courage when I was PDO and, you know, had started constructing home in Mysore and he had taken a loan. So when all the doors closed, when my government jobs vanished, he started getting, you know, his BP and other things. So uh, I, I, I had to repay the loan. So I took only those many students whom I could manage on my own, at the same time, repay the, all the loan in one go. So I didn't think of even single rupee extra during that time. So I took 40 students. They came to Bangalore. I conducted an entrance test to these 40 students. I mean, 311 students. Filtered them. Took only 40 serious students. They all came to Bangalore, except three students. All of them were from non-Karnataka. I mean, outside Karnataka. Only three were Karnadigas, and remaining 37 were non-Karnadigas in 2014 January. In that batch, I made... I. I approached, you know, I had a different approach. I started something called test-based approach. Instead of spoon-feeding them, I started giving them daily targets, daily tests. I started forming my own questions, my own synopsis, and I would give them everyday test, and then I would evaluate sitting in front of them. This personal mentoring came into existence. And in the very first batch, I got All India 5 ranks. That was something unheard of. In, in the entire South India, nobody had done something like that. So five ranks included All India Rank 8. When I say All India Rank 8, let me put it into perspective. It was out of 10 lakh people who had applied that year for the examination. So All India Rank 8 in my first batch and is currently Deputy Secretary in Finance Ministry in Karnataka. He is the third most powerful IAS officer in Finance Ministry in Karnataka. So he got All India Rank 8. And then All India Rank 26, Rank 34, Rank 95, Rank 395. Four became IAS officers, one became IRS income tax officer in the very first batch. And that was the turning point. Then stop because I put everything on the website. The beauty of website was the whole India started noticing it. So then I started attracting more uh, emails, more you know uh, messages that they want to come to Bangalore and you know be under your guidance. So in 2015, I received a mail saying that sir, you got the guy who got rank 34 was from Karnataka, D K Balaji. So I had written a very beautiful article on our website, like how I had helped, how Insights had helped him get that rank, because he was struggling before that. So after he came to Insights AS, yes, he became topper. Reading that article, I received an email from one Nandini KR. She was in Delhi. She wrote a mail saying that I have read D.K. Balaji's article. I would like to come under your guidance. She wrote this mail on September 5th, on the teacher's day. So I want to be your student. So please accept me as your student. I'll come to Bangalore and whatever you tell me, I'll do. I'll try to get a rank in top 10. She actually wrote it. So I wanted such kind of students. I invited her. Uh, she came to Bangalore and she was one of the most hardworking, smart and very humble students that I had at that time. And I predicted her rank one, one month before the result. Right? And it actually appeared later when she got all India rank one, it, it appeared in the news. So she gave an interview to Vijayavani in Canada and uh, she wrote, I mean, she told the reporter that Vinay sir had predicted my rank one, one month before and I never believed it. And I had believed it because I believed in myself, my guidance, and also doubly, I believed in her ability and in her personality. So she got all in the rank one, and that was the turning point. So suddenly, Insights IS became very popular all over India. And there is one next year, Anu Kumari. So she, hers is a case study. She sat from her home and studied. She already, she was married and she had kids. She was working. She solely relied on our website for preparation, except for there is something called optional subject in this examination. She prepared from her home and she got All India Rank 2. And immediately, NDTV went her to interview. There is a clip on YouTube. 
she said that i relied on insights on india and got all india rank 2 and that was some kind of highest point for me because i had never seen her i had never spoken to her suddenly i saw on ndtv somebody saying that you know she, she we haven't met even today also she said that she used my website and became all india rank 2 so that was so empowering you know that was the intention with that intention i had built the website that anybody who didn't have access to coaching anybody who didn't have access to guidance or resources should use the website and start preparing for the examination and once this website became hit in 2015 and 16 every upsc coaching center every upsc website started mimicking our framework our website so all the websites that came after insights is are the copycat of insights is website same initiatives different names same pattern you know different content is same almost same because you cannot study different current affairs so then it became students t- started telling me that there is a partition in this upsc you know civil services journey before insights and after insights ias so after insights ias i am telling very proudly we started getting ias officers who were who could prepare independently who could do self study without going to big coaching institutions and i used to write articles and other things you know telling them the realities the case study i mentioned about panchayat development officer right so bangalore became the hub of upsc civil services preparation till then bangalore never figured in upsc preparation so because upsc preparation is a very big thing for so many lakhs of families they would blindly go to delhi they started coming to bangalore and then bangalore became the upsc hub thanks to insights ias and there was a time in 2015 our website ranking was far ahead than unacademy and byjus but they went to the route of taking you know big investments billion dollars of investment and then uh, they invested hugely on advertisement google ads facebook ads everywhere and you know they bought uh, i mean they sponsored ipl teams indian cricket teams then today we know their story what is happening to them so byjus on the verge of bankruptcy it has got so much a bad reputation nowadays you when, when you type byjus you will never get a single positive comment on google now even when they try to remove or you know do something about it so on the other hand so we didn't become billion dollar company right so started earning enough to employ around 400 to 500 employees in bangalore and delhi and then give consistent results actual results so there is, you being mba students you know what happens in market is that so when there are so many players competing in one particular vertical one particular discipline or sphere they all try to claim results especially in upsc you might have seen like uh, when neat result is out so you start seeing very big advertisement every institution says that there is one topper every institution claims them as the they topper right in upsc also it it happens but a student might have visited their website or you know their institution once and they claim that also as their student because they visited them once that they guided this student to become a topper and all so this kind of uh, uh, cheap you know dirty tricks also uh, work in every field like you know it can be services hospitality or in uh, like education sector that is very unfortunate so we started putting results on the website saying that this fellow had enrolled for this particular course and he stayed our in our institution for this much of duration so the transparency again started building the trust with the toppers and the students and there is so much goodwill that is created by being you know transparent with the students transparent with the people now when i started my political journey like there are students are saying you know the toppers ias officers anonymously i mean uh, privately they are saying that so we will come and campaign for you we will come and you know support you we will do everything that we want you to be in lok sabha so when i decided to contest i mean uh, to plunge into politics to become a politician it was actually students and my you know uh, students were become officers students were still pursuing uh, these coaching classes started telling me that you should enter lok sabha because 
country needs people like you i don't know like you know they started telling me that you know your values and your uh, thinking uh, is pro poor you know pro students i started fighting against the corruption you know kpsc and you know other exam reforms i started tweeting about them i have like 1.26 lakh followers on twitter so everything like organic all of them like officers and you know the students so what happened in this whole process as the title is rightly mentioned the lobby of the delhi started losing its monopoly right today if you visit chandra layout of bangalore right it has become a upsc ecosystem in itself there are like so many institutions that have come up after we established that institution so after our institution the economy of chandra layout has boomed like anything so all the rental businesses hotel businesses you know these photocopy businesses juice coffee shops so many like you know i mean apparels you know that street is like like mini brigade road so you have all the top brands which didn't exist before 5 years so when once we started i mean so that is the power of creation of jobs we have to become creators of jobs rather than trying to you know uh, use our degrees and you know use our money to get into a job in some other company that is what another factor always i wanted to be my own boss so not work under somebody you know under some hierarchy where people would stifle not encourage your creativity right so creativity works only when you have freedom when you have freedom to your mind then only you can be uh, creative and think of creative ideas and innovative ideas so the so called you know uh, out of the box ideas come only when you have actually freedom so all of you who are sitting here my suggestion request for all of you is that number 1 never stop thinking big sub inspectors strictly no we need sub inspectors but right so anybody who wants to become si think of becoming ips because there is a way forward there are people to help there are institutions to help there are websites to help the dream so when you think of ips uh, si becomes easy for you i mean you will easily end up becoming sub inspector when you chase ips right so similarly i want you to dream big you know try to uh, come up with innovative solutions to solve our social issues our Uh, solve certain problems that still exist. You know, in rural area, if you visit, uh, hygiene is still a problem, right? So there is no solution to it. You know, bringing water to all the rural areas, even electricity to rural areas, is still a big problem. I am sure you you have heard uh, social entrepreneurship, right? So what what is social entrepreneurship? You might have studied, right? there might have been lectures on social entrepreneurship so the social entrepreneurship is of course there is a profit but your services right is oriented towards helping the society or solving certain problems in the society that that in the padman movie you might have seen right you might have seen the padman right the person who started producing uh, the sanitary napkins sanitary pads not tampkis pads so that is a social entrepreneurship so think of becoming social entrepreneur right so uh, i would i don't like to take uh, much time of yours i would like to conclude by saying that you know i came from a very humble rural background so if at all i have succeeded to some extent because when i started i didn't have our own home Uh, my own vehicle nothing today i live in a penthouse in a very posh locality in bangalore and i run my i have a posh car also right posh kayan i am mentioning this because till age 31 like most of you i used to travel in train and you know in bmtc bus other ladka ke wo chalte na aise bag bag ke wo pakadna wo sab so that was a kind of life it was full of struggle and then i thought so while being helpful to the society so why not enjoy little luxuries of luxuries of life so that phase again has ended now and i'm again back to my rural roots so now i'm traveling across davangere constituency like a madman you know on on foot eat whatever you get in rural side 
wear whatever you can wear so don't worry about what you are wearing how you are appearing right travel whatever you can get so to do something to the rural india especially starting from the davangere and that phase of you know you know once you feel contented that you have achieved whatever basic things you wanted to buy as per your dreams once you have achieved i think we should put full stop there and then again start looking at helping the society we should not keep accumulating things right so i want you to be that change makers that india actually requires so please come into politics please start creating big companies that actually will help indian society and make india a really a great country in true sense in the sense that there is peace and harmony everywhere there is respect for each and everyone right there is total absence of any kind of violence that we are witnessing in parts like manipur and all and there is a empowered youth right so who is who takes care of our nature and environment in a way that they do not recklessly exploit this nature right you find solution that are sustainable so you have to become the change makers i don't know what is your current thinking but empower yourself by reading books beyond your textbooks do read newspapers keep watching documentaries that will enlighten you keep meeting people who can open your mind to big ideas and whenever this is a very good initiative of reva institution you know conducting this kind of lecture series when you show that uh, when you showed that video i was just going through some of the luminaries who came so please attend these kind of seminars very seriously you never know some idea can become you know a turning point change your life forever it has happened with me and i keep learning from every source from everyone and this is another reason for my small success you know i keep learning from everyone and because i i keep learning from everyone that keeps me humble all the time because i never myself feel that i am somebody more knowledgeable than you because i believe that everybody can actually contribute to each other's knowledge so i wish you all the best and i would like to see a great leaders emerge from this particular uh, audience in the future so that we can work together for better nation and better india and better bharat and better india as well so wish you all the best and uh, thank you so much for <laughs> inviting me and uh, giving me this privilege to talk in front of this audience thank you so much ellargo namaskar invited guest directors and all students present here in fact uh, we witnessed the first young leadership series today and uh, the reason why we had a youngster over here is not to talk about anything that is there available as a resource openly but to talk about himself and his own journey so we heard from mr vinay kumar about his journey his journey was not that easy today if you are all sitting here and experiencing everything probably we are all those privileged lot uh, where we have not gone through all these things and probably we must have gratitude towards our parents who have always supported us empowered us and given us everything that is why we are here today but let us let me tell you that world outside is filled with challenges of course when we were hearing uh, when sir was talking i could see that confidence not only in his talk confidence that comes with experience and hardship let us all understand it is not the topic was not about politics over here of course uh, sir would step into politics in days to come as we wish him for the upcoming lok sabha elections he has decided i think uh, all students have to listen to the lecture very very clearly if you listen to his lecture he spoke about entering politics when not during his early days he has experienced every stage of life and he mentioned one point when you reach the saturation that is when you are successful and when you are doing good doing good in life put a full stop there and do something for the society then so here our discussion was not about which political party do we support and what is that and what no we are not here to discuss about that and educational institutions are not meant for that let us all understand here each of us have ideologies right each of us have many things 
But here, the point is, we need to understand when can we talk about this and when can we get into this. Right, there was a young boy sitting just behind me who told, yes, I would like to get into politics and he knows to get into politics, he needs to be first successful. Therefore, he said, I want to do business first. Right, practical approach. Right, so that is how you people have to be inspired. One more important thing, hailing from a small place and today where he stands, it is something very, very, you can say, uh, appreciable and not only that an outstanding achievement where without any support today he stands here today language is a, as you all know although you all study in English medium schools sometimes I receive letters where you can't even communicate can't even write properly person standing here it is a witness that yes if we work hard in life then truly we can also become like Mr. Vinay Kumar let me tell you Mr. Vinay Kumar can come and Maybe 100 people like him can come over here, stand in this podium and can give lecture that can inspire you. But if you have to become like Mr. Vinay Kumar, then you must work hard for it. You can just get inspired. That's it. But that success story cannot become your success story unless and until you work hard for it. You stay committed for your life. You are accountable for self and you take responsibility for self. And Young Leadership Series is an attempt only to share such inspiring journeys with you which will inspire you and not leave you there but will make you accountable to become an inspirational leaders like them. So thank you all and thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. And we wish you from Reva University, we wish you all the very best. Leaders like you are very important. I'm sure as young as you are, you enter into politics. I think you can do much better. And we wish you all the very best as you step into this new journey. Thank you. First and foremost, I would like to thank our Honorable Chancellor in absentia for supporting and facilitating such a lecture series. It gives me immense pleasure to thank our today's speaker, Sri Vinay Kumar GB, for his time and valuable insights. Thank you so much, sir. I extend my gratitude to Dr. Neetu and Dr. Subramaniam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the faculty members, staff, and students of Reva, Reva Business School for their enthusiastic participation. Thank you all.